Hello, and welcome to this video about Steinberg's Supervision audio visualization plugin. While we shouldn't mix with our eyes, it can often be useful to use a plugin like Supervision to check for issues that we may have missed at other parts of the process. So let's take a look at what it's got to offer. So here you can see this setup in Cubase. We've just got a single stereo track of a track uh, at present, and I've actually inserted it as a insert on this track, but typically you'd put it in the master. It's just easier to access in this case. There you can see supervision, it's default mode. And the first thing you'll notice about it is that you can resize it to any size you want. Now, obviously you wouldn't want it this large in normal use for this mode, but if you've got a 4K screen, etc., it can be really useful to have resizable plugins. And obviously everyone's going in that direction in the future. The big thing about this is we have multiple modes. So I'm just gonna leave the track playing in the background or they turn it down so it's not gonna overwhelm me. And you can see we've got level, we've got loudness. So you've got loudness metering. We've got spectrum curve. So this is typical spectrum analyzer. And for all these modes, we've got options. So we can alter the module. So in this case, we've got time smoothing, we've got peak fallback, so how much it falls back quickly. So you can see it's happening, frequency smoothing, etc. So for all of these modes, you've got relevant settings and importantly, we can reset them back to the defaults pretty quickly. We've also got spectrum bar, kind of thing you'd typically see. And we can pick how many bands per octave we've got from the preset choices here. So from a simple one right up to 24. Spectrum intensity, which is uh, a useful variation on that. And spectrogram, something which we've been seeing increasingly if you've seen WaveLab. This is quite useful for particularly seeing what's happening with harmonics, etc., over a range. And if you've used a uh, spectral editing tools such as spectral layers, this is going to be extremely familiar. Chromogram, which is a variation on the spectrogram view. And some phase related tools, so phase scope. Pan, so pan positions, which certainly makes quite a lot of sense. And we can see it expand out again. Uh, multi-pan so this is per frequency so this can be quite useful because particularly you often want a correlation at low frequencies so your lower frequencies you probably want less panning in there and it can be a little wider at the top end so you can check pretty quickly what's happening with this and you can see for the most part we're central on the low frequencies and then getting wider as we get further up uh, correlation so this is correlation between the two channels so can see whether there is correlation generally there will be because we are in phase and the same thing's happening on both channels if you had the opposite happening on both channels then you'd be all the way over here so generally you wouldn't want to be there and multi-correlation so this is quite interesting so this is showing that across different frequencies so again we can see if there's any particular uh, unusual phase issues in fact we can see that there seems to be one at certain points in this track Spatial domain, so these won't work because we're not in a surround project. Uh, but waveform, the traditional oscilloscope. Uh, wavescope, which is pretty much the wave that you've got here, uh, just being played across your screen. And the slightly less useful, in my opinion, wave circle, although if it happens to work with the tempo of your track, then you get these nice sort of stars going around, but that's the kind of thing. Now. That's all very well, but I think the killer feature for this is it's fully configurable. So you can split it horizontally or vertically. So let's split it vertically. And then in this channel, we can pick. So whichever one we've got highlighted is what the menu applies to. So here, let's keep that as level. And then we can split that one again and then maybe change that to uh, wave scope, etc. So you can, you can configure it any way you like and it works really, really well. So this has replaced for me the SPL Hawkeye, which 
was a paid product and I paid quite a lot for it and I find this is much more usable because it gives me the tools that I want. It's resizable and its user interface is reasonably friendly. If you want to get rid of any of these sections, you can just click there and we're back to whatever view we want. So while, again, it's not the kind of thing that's a night and day, oh, this is the most amazing feature I've ever come across. It's nice to have that amount of metering in there because it's, it's really important that you do use these tools to make sure that the files that you're outputting, the audio that you're outputting, is actually what you think it is and it's following technical standards etc and there aren't any perhaps not obvious when you listen to them problems but it's worth checking them so sometimes you'll see things such as phase problems or frequencies missing etc that kind of thing and it can be useful to ensure that your end result is technically good as well as obviously artistically good. So there you've seen the main features and settings for supervision and you'll have an idea whether it's going to be useful for you in your workflow. I hope you found this video useful, and if you have, please consider liking and subscribing as it really helps the channel out. We'll see you again soon for more Music Tech Tuition.